This week on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast, I'm talking about fortifying your data and protecting yourself from cybercrime. Yesterday, I talked about three practical steps you can take to prevent cybercrime today. And today, I'm talking about three more steps you can take. Number one, make your social media accounts private so that when you post things, it doesn't go to everyone, it just goes to your friends. And along with that, I'd probably cut down your friends list and make sure that everybody that you are sharing these things with are people that you know in real life. If you can't remember, how do I know that person? You should probably defriend them. One of the strongest security measures available on your accounts to protect your accounts is just doing this, keeping your friends list to people who you know. And if you're going to post something, make sure that only your friends and not the whole world can see what you're up to. You also want to be very cautious about posts. For example, something seemingly innocuous like your dog, Rocky. If Rocky is the password for all the sites, People can easily go online and find information about you. And so we want to limit that information because if Rocky or some combination using Rocky's name is your password for your bank accounts and a bunch of other websites, fraudsters know this and they'll use that and try to guess your password. And it doesn't take long for them to guess your password. Like an average time it takes someone to hack into your account when you don't use a good strong password is something like, I don't know, like 12 seconds or something. Because people use kids' names, pets' names, birth date or birth year based passwords. You want to keep that in mind too. Other details like where you live, your employer, your date of birth, those can be great sources of information for thieves. So A long time ago, I went in and took off a lot of, well, I've done a few things. Combing through my friends list and people I didn't recognize or didn't remember how I knew them, I defriended them. I don't share on Facebook that often, maybe a handful of times a year. On average, I bet once every other month or once every three months or something, I post something. I've also made it sure that when I do post something, it is only seen by people who are friends of mine who I know in real life. And obviously being careful about these other things as well. Another thing that you can do is use a VPN and stay off unprotected public Wi-Fi. So a VPN basically provides a secure encrypted internet connection. So if you're at a coffee shop, if you're at an airport, if you're staying at a hotel, and you have your laptop with you and you're using anywhere, basically you're not at home, but you're using the internet, you want to do that via a VPN. The other piece of that is that if you stay off of unprotected Wi-Fi, you're going to prevent a lot of these breaches from happening as well. So unprotected Wi-Fi, anything that doesn't require a password, make sure that you are logging into the right Wi-Fi network and that you are entering password If I go do work at a coffee shop and I take my laptop, I'm getting on a known public Wi-Fi network that I know belongs to the coffee shop, the name and the password match. And then once I'm on the public Wi-Fi, I'm only using a VPN. So that way, if if you were to accidentally get on a Wi-Fi network that you thought was a coffee shop, but was like the guy sitting three tables down from you. And then you go in and you buy some things online, you log into your bank account, you do certain things, they can see all of that. So to prevent that, you need to use a VPN and that makes sure that everything is encrypted, especially on any public Wi-Fi or maybe a a non-secure Wi-Fi network. And then the last one is invest in security software. Make sure it's up to date. You have antivirus, malware software that can help you detect attempts to access your personal information. And the fees there are pretty reasonable, certainly a lot more or a lot less than what it would cost if your data ended up being leaked. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Ashley Michike, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.